Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are across the world. Welcome to Show Studio. And today we are looking at Milan and we're looking, interestingly enough, at an American label that shows in Milan. And we'll be talking in a very short while about Calvin Klein. But before that, I would like my guests to introduce themselves and we'll start with you, Cyprian. Thank you. Hello, I'm Cyprian Dakota, stylist and personal shopper, and hopefully one day to start my own label in menswear. Um, I'm Alex Fiori. Um, I was formerly the fashion director of Show Studio. Um, I'm now editor of Love Magazine. Jack Tobin. I was previously a fashion designer in Italy and London, and now I head up Selfridges Bespoke. Hi, I'm Rashan Ajamang. I'm a fashion designer and fashion director of Rebel Magazine. Great. Thank you all very much indeed for coming. Um, whilst we're talking about menswear generally, uh, are you wearing something which you've designed? Is this one of yours? I'm, I'm not wearing anything that I've designed. Why is that? Um, just who do, well, all right, who, who's this jacket by? Um, this is from Jaeger. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Tell us about that incredibly exciting thing you've got. It is exciting. Um, because it's actually Autumn Winter 13 that I'm wearing, so it's the new uh, Nicole Fari collection. Under hot, the hot, hot. Hot off. <laughs> hot off the catwalk. Um, it's under the new creative direction of Joanna Sykes, who I yes. think is doing quite exciting things. Great. Now, Alex, I think I want you to talk about your shoes. Uh, the shoes are churches. Um, nothing particularly special about them. Oh, I wouldn't say that. That's nice. I think they're great. And I'm the a bit. Yeah, they're very proud, yes. Were they very expensive? Not ridiculously. No? I would. <laughs> but then I think the lines of what is ridiculously expensive and what is not ridiculous, ridiculously Subjective. expensive and have, have been redrawn quite recently. Well, it's an entirely individual thing, mm. isn't it really, you know? Yeah. Cyprian, what about your marvellous <laughs> oh, Thank you, thank you. Trousers as well by Nicole Fari, shirt by Mark Powell. Uh, coat vintage, and I like it because it's very much like our uh, Ralph Simmons. Uh, Who, what label is the coat? It's an old Jaeger coat, believe it or not, oh, really? that I found in a second-hand right. shop in um, Oxford, and my hat is also Which from Moonstock like. and Spears. Right. Yes. Gosh, it's a name. <laughs> so there we are, all suited and booted. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we feel is driving menswear at this moment. We've seen London, we're now about to see Milan, and of course we are all aware because all the magazines are coming out now for the season. What do we think is it, what's it really about? Jack, you talk from the point of view of a retailer, so what do you think? I, I think really it's the variety now that we're seeing that once upon a time we only saw in women's wear and that now all of a sudden there is so much more for men, um, so much more of everything in terms of new designers and variety of labels, not just the traditional go-to that everybody once had, but even just in terms of colour and cut, more exciting techniques being explored in men's wear that maybe were just limited to women's wear before and now people aren't afraid so much. So I just think we're seeing a lot more of everything. Hence the reason we've had a London week now instead of just a day. Well, three on. days, yeah. three days, yeah. in fact. Do you think that's true? Do you think that, uh, Alex, do you think that we are no longer quite so... Men are the weaker sex, we know this. We're also the cowardly sex because we always need the approbation of our fellows. Mm. But do you think that men are getting more bold and more courageous? Thinking of men generally, not just in the hotbeds of London, New York, Milan or Paris. What do you think? I think, I think it's reasonable to say that there's a wider variety on offer for men now which has led to men making more adventurous choices. Um, and it does parallel women's wear. I um, wrote something recently about pre-collections for men which are starting to become... They've existed for a while as a commercial product, but now they're starting to have their own kind of creative identity and editorial mm -hmm. identity in a way that we've seen the women's pre-collections kind of develop in the last maybe five or six years. Um, and that is because designers have told me that that's because men are coming and demanding clothes that have more of an identity. They don't just want to buy a grey suit mm -hmm. from the pre-collection. Mm -hmm. They want something that has kind of a creative identity 
and makes a statement. Um, I'm always interested in the fact that retailers will buy into a certain type of, of garments from a collection and then maybe the more, what we'd say is the more extreme pieces are the pieces that tend to sell out quicker because that's what a lot of men are demanding okay. now. Yeah, just to follow on with that, stay with you for a moment, what is driving this? Is it magazines? Is it commercial considerations like the big stores doing big promotions and everything? Why is there this renewed interest? I mean, I think or have men just grown up and become more confident? I think a lot of it comes from the internet, which is an old thing to say, but the fact that people have access to the images of catwalk looks and can see the fact that a collection wasn't just grey suits, it, you know, it had these exciting elements, mm. and that all of a sudden they have those on offer as opposed to them being edited out for them. Um, if they can see that they exist, I think people are now asking why they're not able to buy those pieces. Mm. Um, you know why they only exist for editorial and not for and not for sales as well um, and also there's the very basic idea that uh, you can only charge so much for something simple but if something's embroidered and embellished and bedazzled and it, it's going to be more expensive and if people are willing to pay that higher price for something then why not cater towards that and sure. make more money mm -hmm. it's, you know, fashion's a business. Mm. There's that sort of basic okay. requirement. If you can make more money out of somebody, why wouldn't you choose sure. to do that? Cyprian, do you think money, the, the cost is very important with men? The cost's important now because we've got so many paper billionaires. The internet, the whole notion of our masculinity is changing. We're living in incredibly fractious times. And as all creatives know, it's incredibly exciting to be working within these times. I think what we've got, the internet, of course, you've got people from all over the world, from Argentina to Zimbabwe, who have got the money to pay £5,000 for a coat. And that establishes their status within their sometimes very small milieu of their taste, their wealth, and most of all, their capacity to acquire something that no one else will have. And also, of course, their lifestyle. And their lifestyle. This is the and their lifestyle. Platform, because yes. one of the things I think that Jill Sander, who I'm a huge fan of, with her military collars, don't forget those collars that mm. she used as a substitute for a scarf. I'm constantly thinking when you go out, why do you have to have a coat, a scarf, a hat, and stuff like that? So it's such a clever way to make a man's outfit so simple yet still so incredibly functional so there are these things as well that we're constantly pushing the boundaries as any creative mm -hmm. would to try and come up with new idioms okay what about you Russia from the point of view of designing what do you when you are designing do you have a particular customer in mind what do you find your customers demand um, with me um, usually I have a particular customer in mind but um, Usually I design first and then I start looking at the cost of things and how much um, it's going to cost to do in production and mm -hmm. all sorts like fabrics. I mean, because I'm a young designer, I have to um, make sure that I make some money back all the time. So um, usually my costs usually are high because um, I have to produce a lot of the stuff myself and, you know, I couldn't produce a lot. So I had to make sure that, you know, I make some money back mm -hmm. every season to keep producing. Where do you have your clothes made? Um, I did everything in London. Everything done here. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Do you think this problem, this is a problem for everybody? You know, we all know, I know certainly, that mm -hmm. in women's, where there are an awful lot of young designers here in this city, and I'm sure in other cities as well, who are hanging on desperately and are really what not we making see much happening. Do you find this with men? I think what, 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 what from, from the general consensus, remember, with the new BRIC nations, China in particular, and I think the EU has put into place whereby if a garment says made in Italy, France or in England as well, everything has to be made in England. Not even the button can come from China anymore. And of course, the Chinese, with their rising wealth, they no longer want garments made in China. They want their garments to be made in England, made in England, France or Italy, because that's what they're paying for. 
what is and, and as a result what has happened you have so many small factories in london and throughout mm -hmm. england being reopened and not shutting which down anymore, which, which is marvelous which is marvelous what we have too is you can find sympathetic manufacturers who will then do small runs for you. Yeah. And as we know, like most of the designers in East London, they all have a network of, of manufacturers yeah. Yeah. from knitwear to jackets to coats yeah. to shirts, mm -hmm. hats, yeah. everything, all within the well, East this is, this is, is this true in your yeah, experience as well, Richard? Yeah, because I think this is very important because yes. in the past, British designers always came a cropper because they yes. were going to Italy and Italy works in huge units volumes and the result being that the British designers were at the end of the queue if there was a little strike a little shop yes. or if it was coming to the holiday then they often weren't able to deliver and we're going back 20 years now but yes. London got a very bad name for not being reliable because as you know Jack there is nothing more terrifying and annoying when you, you've worked out your adjacency on all the floors and suddenly to find you have an empty a gap. Yeah. What do you do then? Apart from, I mean, don't, what I mean is not practically what you do, like making. Yeah, making, no, it's interesting. Do you actually say about a designer, that's it? Basically, yeah. yeah. Because I've, I've been at both ends of that. So I've been at a small new gen label where I've had the retailer emailing and saying you're not meeting the delivery window and because production's always so late all the time because you're having such small units done so the factory pushes it right back it's the least of their priorities and so you're trying to correspond with them and you know beg them basically to say we'll, we'll do it right at the end of the delivery window because they want things every, well the customer first of all wants everything now and they don't want things towards the end of the season and so once it hits the floor if it's hitting the floor later than everything else it's just not worth having it there, to be no, honest. No. It's missed the opportunity. It's more trouble than it's, it's worth. It's more trouble way. than it's worth, yes, yeah. Yes. And then what we see happening as well, which I thought I, I read somewhere that's, well, I mean, you, you know, you meet people, so many people, the whole notion of, of, of bespoke and couture is becoming so common because so many people, if they're paying, <laughs> Five thousand pounds for a dress. They do not want to go to a function and see six women wearing that dress. So what you find is so many houses are now customizing bags, yeah, shoes yeah. for just that one person, mm -hmm. and you find it happening not just in London but all over oh, the yeah. world. Yes. You know, yes. and, and and because it's such a common thing now. Because remember, everything is there at the click of a button, sure. no matter where you are. And also to you don't even have to go to a shop. You don't even have to go to the shop, right? But of course, with what we're seeing as well, bricks and mortar and the cloud and the internet, they support each other and they can live. So it's not the death of shopping and it's not the death of internet. It, they can coexist so harmoniously together. But only for a certain length of time, I would have thought. You know, rather like st steam and um, horse yes, carriage. Yes, they can, but remember, and there will be footballers they are teenagers growing up today who in five years time will be, be my future com yeah. my future yeah. customers yeah. that's the way i look at that yeah. so for me i think it's a continuing and you know you build your client base you have their parents you've got them on lockdown then you've got the kids <laughs> you know, right yes. yeah. alex i want to ask you to go on from what jack said um i remember matthew williamson when he first started he went to see vogue and they were very excited, but he was told, you must have some stockists before we put you in the magazine. So he went out mm -hmm. and got stockists. And we all know that from there and on, it's been very good and very successful for him. How important do you think it is nowadays for you as a journalist working on a magazine to know that your readers are going to be able to buy what you are showing? Very quickly, because I think we're going to go visiting um, to Milan at any second. It's still an issue if people don't have a British stockist, a lot of magazines won't feature them. But it's isn't that sad? Because there can be marvellous young designers with great talent. How are they going to show well, that? That includes order? major. A lot of people um, didn't shoot the Wave clothes because the mm. Wave clothes didn't have a UK stockist. They mm. could shoot the accessories. Um, but they wouldn't shoot the clothes. But then that's the role of, I'm sorry, that's the role of small magazines. Uh, I worked on a couple of small magazines, small independent magazines, and I think that's the role of a non-commercial, smaller independent publication, mm -hmm. because in that case, 
you then because that's what I always did. I looked for designers, didn't have a stockist, and you yeah. you gave them a platform in which they can show their stuff, and you simply put their telephone I, I, numbers or their yeah, internet. Yeah, I kind of available. I kind of disagree because okay. um, as a young designer, when I first started out, um, I had a lot of you know support from stylists like Nicola Formichetti, um, Simon Foxen, um, and I didn't have any stockists when I first started out, so. Um, they, yeah, were with, the they were willing to shoot my stuff. Use was it. this because you were in a social network with them? I mean, yeah. I mean, if you'd come from out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, that helped. But when I first started, I, was, I just made sure I emailed everyone mm -hmm. um, to look at my collection, try to meet up with people, go to the right places. Um, with Have you seen wearing your own clothes, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Sure. I used to do that, like Boombox, Rich Mortimer's um, mm -hmm. Boombox. Um, yeah. I used to go there, wear my own clothes, and people would ask me, oh, where do you get that from? And that's how it all started. London is very like small and everyone kind of knows each other and gets to know each other very quickly. So yeah. that also helps. Yeah. And I think there is a great inter, inter reaction at the, at the small magazine level, as Cyprian has said, you know, the, the situation is that you all do the same things. Mm. I mean, it's rather more complex, I think, say in New York, mm. because the people who make the decisions, the, the grand, the grand ladies of yeah. the top magazines but I think do not go clubbing down in the No, but then I think well. because then that, that's the market you're catering for because you're a young designer and if you're a young designer, let's say, and you're doing sort of a prim proper preppy look, then you won't be going clubbing. But there must be an independent magazine within which, and you know what I mean? Oh, yes, I'm not saying, yeah. you know, I, I think yeah. small okay. magazines are marvelous. Yes. I think it's harder in New York than London. Mm. New York seems more grown up, um, all the magazine seems more established and mm -hmm. less willing to help young designers as I feel like London, they love like new talent, they love to help them yeah. out. And there's an enormous tolerance I think uh, for young magazines, Alex, I'm sure you know mm. a lot of them. I mean, a lot of them are absolute rubbish. But they still go on publishing, yes. you know. But yes. they're rubbish, perhaps, to me, mm. because they're so clearly pushing what the owner or the stylist or really, really loves. And this, mm. I think, is why small magazines, I think you're absolutely right, small magazines are so important. Im absolutely. Because they can speak honestly. Independently. Everybody mm. out there, everybody in the knows that the big magazines, the Vogue's, the Harper's and all, they have to mm. bear in mind where their major income comes from, which Absolutely. is, of course, from advertising. I mean, that's why I started my magazine, Rebel, so I, um, I can have a voice for the younger yeah. generation. And um, I use young photographers, um, established photographers as well as stylists and yeah. designers, and we just mix them all up. And mm. we can basically say what we like without having being controlled by advertisers. Mm. Have you ever worked together? Have you done no, we haven't, but I've worked on, yeah. Right. How easy was it to set up your own magazine? Well, was I just... there a lot of opposition from existing it was, magazines? It was pretty easy. Um, at the time, um, I got um, Man, Lulu Kennedy's yes, Man, and yes. I wanted to do something different. So um, me and my business partner, Jaden, um, we just um, decided to start up our magazine. At the time, Nick was doing the show to the exhibition at Somerset House, mm -hmm. and he kind of let me use the studio, and I just asked Simon, um, would you, Simon Foxton, would you yes, um, yes. like to contribute to the magazine? And he was like, sure, why not? And that's how we started, and a lot of like young um, stylists like Anna Trevelyan, um, Matthew Joseph got on board, and I had an art director, Rob Myers, as well, and we all just got you together. All in together. Yeah, and it was and just I guess really simple. You didn't pay them. See, this is what, every, I, think, every, every this is what I think is great with, yeah. with, with mm. free ma yeah. magazines that are free to do what they want. You can, there's an enormous amount of goodwill, I always think. Yeah, yeah. So people from outside say, oh, it's a damn bitchy and everything. Well, of course it's bitchy. So <laughs> because we're passionate. <laughs> so it's acting. Yeah, you know, it's you're you're passionate. Do you think politics aren't bitchy? It's very bitchy. But, <laughs> uh, yes, but no more than anyone else. Yes, I don't think it is anymore. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have to say in that respect, I know a cross-section of people from different professions. And the bitchiest I have found have been lawyers. Oh, Never, ever oh, fashion people. Well, as we're confessing, I'll tell you the bitchiest <laughs> I have is years and years ago, 
I had a very unhappy period. In fact, when I was teaching in a very tough school, yes. in a city school, that was great. The kids, were the, the, it was a boys' school, the kids were fabulous, absolutely fabulous. It was the staff yes. who drove yeah. me mm. mad. Mm. Always going to the headmaster and saying, you know, you, his class was waiting outside, and all of this sort of stuff. And I thought, really, this is how I came into fashion. I this is not a way for grown ups in life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, um, with, with my magazine, when we started, I think a lot of people were under pressure. They weren't really getting paid, not making money. So at the same time, they just let in steam out. And, you know, when you're not making that much money, you're always like thinking about other things like paying your bills on time and all of that stuff. So. Sure. Well, whether you're making a lot of money or not, you're still worried. I think that's the, that's the real, um, the, kind of as much as it is a good thing, that's the real problem with London, say, versus New York, mm -hmm. is that nothing happens in New York unless it's involving money. And mm -hmm. these are fantastic, these collaborations. Do you think that's, really, do you think that's really true? I think so. Uh, there are some, yeah. there are some sort of subversive magazines in New York. But in the, oh. in the designer side of things, even ah, some of the designers yeah. that people talk about as being new designers, when you know really some of their backgrounds and what's going on behind the scenes, and some of the, a lot of those people, the majority, are from money or have a lot of money behind them sure. or, already. They're not, yeah. like, it's not the no, same. That's a good example. Yeah, and, and others as well. Yes. Um, uh, but then, ah, here we go. We have here we go. <laughs> Lift off. Sorry. Right, here we go. Lift off. Here we go. We're going to look at a few and then after a few minutes we start giving our opinion. It's rather dark. Yeah, so everything's going to be black. I think you're probably right. <coughs> Maybe a hint of colour at the end. Little flash, yeah. you know, that red that you do in black. <laughs> <laughs> it's the orange I do black. Like Matthew, or the Eve Clan like, blue. Like Matthew Miller and London did an all black collection with just hints of red. Which that was quite brilliant. Quite I like nice. to, yeah. Yes, yes. I, I'm, what I'm focusing on actually nice is the uh, is the styling. The hair yeah. across a lot of the shows has been so slick. Everybody's yes. been doing that same hair yeah, and the same kind of man as well. Yes, absolutely. There is. A type of man this year. Yeah. Definitely. Right. What I'm looking at is the way he slimmed down his proportions from the last two seasons. You just remember the last two seasons he had these amazing yeah. almost raglan type sleeves and reminiscent of Balenciaga. But now we see we have something very, very straight and structured. Yeah. We must say for the for the people who are listening, of course. Balenciaga never made clothes for men. They were about Balenciaga's women. Women's wear, yes. But that was the f interesting thing that he did. It's interesting you saw Balenciaga in that. I just thought it looked like jocks. I well, was there was that, no, but I always looked at it as that big sleeve, that dolman sleeve that Balenciaga did, you know, because you, your mind flits on so many things, you know. I just hope there's no horrible burnt orange like I've been seeing a lot this season. Burnt orange, the dark orange, I don't care. But it's, you know, the eye searing orange is just. Has well, it's a silly thing to buy because you, you wear it first time, people say, wow. Second time, they know, yeah. Third time, they are not that old. Mm -hmm. Well, you wear it once a year. <laughs> I like this, the look of this. Yes, the bomber jacket. It's very slick and yes, yes. pared down. But it's all started to look the same now because it's so dark. Yeah, we can't get into the details. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of pony skin. I think because he's also, he uses lots of very good fabrics and his fabrications is that's what he experiments with a lot. So and I think you can see the contrast in the sleeve, the body and the sleeve. You can tell there are two the different fabrications nice. there. I think they're lovely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lovely with it being so dark uh, and because we can't see that much contrast, you can really see the silhouette. Which yeah. Is yes. Very strong. Yeah. Which may be yeah. what it's all about. You know, maybe yeah. they manipulated it because their statement this is the silhouette. Yeah. Shape. Well, then somebody say in all men's oh. where it starts on the shoulders first, mm -hmm. whether you have a straight shoulder or a rounded shoulder, that's where it starts on men's wear. Like I think Cyprian was saying that it was much more looser before. Yes. Like yes. It's, yes. it's yes. gone much more fitted this year. Yeah. I like this quite Yeah, I prefer the straight. Fitted, yeah. I like the, the Balenciaga referencing with those sleeves. I do love those sleeves. They're difficult one for a lot of men to 
to have But there's so many men now. I mean, remember with Rick Owens, that's the other thing I was oh, thinking of. Gray. Rick Owens sells so well with lots of basketballers and American basketballers oh, well. who are six foot mm. something. Yes. And they need and they want yeah. those things. So now the brought in gray yes. is changing up, up a bit. I like the grey. Yeah. It's got like a stripe. And everybody's been doing a double breasted but a single opening jacket. Yes. Have we noticed that and this that, season? That is a trend. Yes. yes. That's a lovely look. I don't think yeah. I've seen any grey this season. Really. Grey on grey on grey. No. No, no. It's amazing, I think, to we see the shadow Mr. Armani still has, or all this grige we're seeing that's coming back. Well, you know. Well, you know, people do go back and look again. And just, Armani was in the 50, 60s and 70s. Which yeah. was a major revolution. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of a blue, isn't it? That's yes. Well, out. these yeah, introduced well. this sort it's of blue garbage. now. This slate. Well, now blue. this is a colour we've seen uh, in, in London. This sort of chambray. It almost looks like a chambray. Well, we do. Who was it who uh, cut? The, the jackets and trousers match. And Richard Nichol. Richard Nichol. Richard Nichol, yeah. yeah. The he's doing the same sort of colour. Yes. It's grey. I'm surprised I haven't seen any colour blocking yet. Well, we've got a little more time. Yes. I think this is a very clever show because mm. It isn't revolutionary, but it's no. understandable. Yeah, mm. and if, if we can see the fabrications, I'm sure the fabrics oh, are probably a Yes. And priced accordingly. Calvin yes. Klein fabrics, that's what I love. Yes, yes. Calvin it's Klein. Calvin Klein collection. Yeah. Especially spring, summer, you can see a lot of the technical fabrics. That yes. yes. I actually think that this is one of the cleverest fashion pieces. Yeah. I think yeah. like yes. yes, absolutely. Yeah, I love the sleeve, effect, the yes. Yes. Beautiful shoes for that. Knitwear is coming on so much for men now as well. Like yes. yes. The knitwear yeah. across the shows has been a standout. Absolutely. Yes. And I think I, I like to say that's all that's down to sibling. I mean, the way they've shaken yes. it up. It's I, all been down pushing. to sibling. Yes. Yeah, definitely really you know, doing that twin set in, in those animal prints. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, well, that hit it out of the ballpark. Even Jill Sander tried to do a bit with this um, knitwear. Yes. yes. With the yes. Um, like stripes yeah. and I'm very bodies. interested to see, to see that that came from Nikon Far. Yeah. yeah. It's really very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know? What sort of age do you think these guys are, would you say? The Alex? models? Yeah. Alex, what do you very think? Very young. About 20. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 25. So the demographic yeah. is really very young indeed. Yeah. Although, mind you, these clothes can be worn by, by everyone. Wide range. Yeah. This is a wide range yeah. one see in this. Ed All you've got to do is have kept your figure, basically. I don't even think it's a oh, question right. of keeping yeah. your figure. No, those blues on shapes would look very odd on a fat, fat it, person. Yes. <laughs> this is a buyer's dream, really. Everything it is. is black, it no is. hotel. Yes. Yes, but it's not, um, it's not boring because you know when you're going to be looking at the fabrications mm. that it's going to be interesting. And the subtle detailing, yeah. I think that's always the issue I've found with Calvin Klein is when I've not been at the show, I, it doesn't have the impact. And then when you're at the show, it's one of the best of the season. Oh, yes. Because it's or nearly always. incredibly yes. impressive in person, but yes. it doesn't register as a picture quite mm. as well. Yes. You know, there are... When you've been out as long as I have, there are very few shows where you think, <laughs> I love this, I would love to wear this. What do you I think has been your most I always feel That's a, a gorgeous colour, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Really what, what, nice. how you, is that a blue? Kind of, I would say oxblood, I think. Oxblood, oxblood yes, yeah. it's an oxblood. What do you think has been your most memorable way at men's way show, Mr. McDonald? Oh my God, that's a tricky one. Let's think about that after <laughs> I <I'm> concentrate <laughs> on this moment. Actually, I do know it was John Galliano's when he did that extraordinary thing with some like Vikings and yes. early warriors. And yes. That was yes. an extraordinary uh, show. I remember Nick Knight and Summer Foxton shot Marvel Arena on yeah. for Arena. Marvelous. Yes. That was amazing. Absolutely. They captured it completely. It was a great show. I could see myself wearing a lot of this collection, actually. I love black. Oh, well, I think yes. <laughs> but what do you want to wear? See, I don't wear suits. Well, so just I mark. You can wear the jacket with yeah. something. Well, that's an interesting thing to say. 
my my proportions you? don't sit correctly in a suit. Have you ever had any done by Savile? Or have you got, found your tailor? That's the thing to do. Find your tailor. See, that's so true. If, yeah, you, if you had one made. Well, no, I think actually, yeah. Alex is very sensible. Know yourself, that's important. Yes. I just, I know no. that I can't, I don't look good in a suit. No, so really? Yeah. Right, There's things like over. Let's see one last thing. <laughs> and I think we're all very happy with this. Yeah. Aren't we? So much more positive than um, yesterday's Jill Sander. It seems mm. we all quite unanimously like yes. the show. I was saying, was Jill Sander contentious? I loved Jill well, Sander. I loved it, yes. I think the panel well, here yesterday mm. weren't too enamoured with it. I it wasn't <laughs> exactly contentious. We just. I wouldn't say I loved quite it. Get across it didn't seem cohesive. What it was about because it mm. didn't have a story. This I think it's the light. So, as well. this is yeah. so cleverly mm. edited mm. and presented. The back of that jacket has a funny shape. Sometimes you know what you're going to see at a Calvin yes. Klein show, though. I think it's because the model's too um, Yes, because you want, that's a that. very good yeah. point, actually. You do know what you're going to see from Calvin Klein. Yes. Because, well done. Spring, Excellent. summer is always more fun and loose. Yes. And autumn, winter is very serious and tailored. Yes. yes. But I mean, that's because there is a really strong Calvin Klein aesthetic. Yes. Mm. And what they're doing is they're going around it in circles around it. Yeah. And that's fine because you can mm. keep dipping in, you know. Yeah. Um, think of Picasso, he kept painting basically the same yeah. picture all his life. Well, a friend of mine who worked at Calvin Klein at one time, they've got a printout of absolutely every garment, what unit it sold, it sold going back forever. Oh, I think they all do and that. And they though. simply have, okay, so this is the skirt that keeps selling, so we simply do it, okay, this year we do it flat front, next yeah. year we put a tiny tuck on it, yeah. and that's it. Do you think there's a future in menswear for capsule collections which are the all-time greats, as it were? Yes. You know, Calvin Klein's all-time greats. Um, yeah. Prada. Prada's all-time mm. greats or whatever. Would they sell, Jack? Well, they are, we, I mean, we, someone say, oh, I used to have that years ago. I don't but know. we already kind of have that already, in a sense that when, so when, say, for example, Prada's new collection hits the floor, uh, it, as part of that, there's continuity pieces that, like you're saying, are their best sellers that have come through that they've just done in a new fabrication yeah. that the regular Prada customer knows and they yeah. go to for that particular pencil skirt, or whatever, yeah. and then it's just highlighted with the new season being brought in around it. Mm -hmm. so that's that's the what most brands tend to do. Yeah, but someone like you, Alex. You really want something new, don't you, for the page? Yes. I mean, how easy would it be for you to choose clothes like that? To well, see, I'm not They're a stylist. Very stylist so no, I know, but you're involved with all of the decisions. I mean, no, no, but I'm sure you have mm. conferences where you talk about what you're going to write about and, and what they're going to photograph. Yeah. Would there, would there be a difficulty with that because it's too understated? Maybe. Too sophisticated for a young audience. I am. Know. I'm a stylist. I'm a, I was a stylist. Okay, well let's yes. have, sorry. let's hear Alex. Then we'll come back to you too. No, I don't think so. I think this you can generally look at a collection and focus, even if it's not to your taste. You can focus on one particular thing that syncs up with what you're mm -hmm. thinking about. I think it was someone's talking about it as the kind of Diana Freeland approach, which is you look at a collection and you might hate it all, but you see one bit of tartan, you're thinking tartan, yeah. and then that's your takeaway yeah. from that collection is that this fits with my yeah. vision. Yeah. Um, and I think when we talk about love, one of the great things about the magazine is that it's incredibly precise in, in its vision for each season. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's almost about finding pieces that fit into that rather than trying to fit what we're thinking about around what people have done. Mm. It's much more that we go to it with a point of view mm -hmm. and draw pieces out to fit in with, with the story that we mm. want to tell, which is quite different to the way a lot of fashion magazines approach. I, and that it, to me, it feels like it's more of a, uh, it, it's more the way things used to be. Was it's that more you, had, you have a vision that you yes. fit the season around rather yes. than trying to Absolutely. leap yes. around what designers yes. are doing yes. necessarily. How do you feel about these shows from the point of view of styling, doing a, a I'm shoot? I usually when I'm doing a shoot or when I'm looking at collections, I usually put them into categories like in colour um, color palettes or prints. Mm. And then I work in that kind of... Um, I'm stuck. Finding, <laughs> no, a, finding a story you, what you within... within yeah. What would you do with this though? Because there isn't a wide range. Well, by what we could see, 
there didn't seem to be a very wide range of colour mm. and virtually, well, no print. No print, no, no yes, print which was lovely. It was, well, it was just a palette cleanser yeah. from after watching from London. I thought it was incredibly genius, no print at all. I mean, for me, for Calvin Klein, one of the things that I think from a styling perspective, the references I always look at are Paul Strand and August Sander. Those images, Avedon, uh, Philip Corsa de Lorca, it's the way I would style a shoot like that. Cityscapes, Philip Corsa de Lorca, always use like six men, all done up in the same look mm. in an amazing Mies van der Rohe building. Mm. Or we can do the American Gothic, and as we see, Edward Enninful did that brilliantly because it's a look that I'm channeling as well. There's a television show called Hatfield and McCoy where they're doing amazing sort of turn of the century hats and it's a similar thing that I would do. You do the American Gothic prairie land so that that's one way of tackling such a precise tailored look I think. I, I, I wish there was a little bit of print because I've noticed that if past few seasons Calvin Klein has been trying to include print into mm. their collections like I remember there was a white suit with like on um, black stripes, I yeah. don't know if you remember mm. yes, that. Look. Yes. And I think last season he was doing this kind of floral. They had a flower gentle, print. Yeah. 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 Floral print. I'm glad well, I saw no prints. I, I think that Calvin Klein, the Calvin Klein person, doesn't it like probably print. just doesn't want print. They're not a brand, are they? They're not a print. Oh, yeah, brand they're not print. No. 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 That isn't what comes no, to mind. I don't think there's going to no. be much print this season because I'm sorry. Prada, Prada didn't do it for menswear last season, so I think the knock on effect is there won't be much this season. Absolutely. Well, she usually tends to. Yeah, she's well, from her, have her followers. Have her followers. Mm. Yeah. What is exciting is what we're going to see this afternoon. What is she going Absolutely. to do? I think Prada would do the opposite and probably do print. Yes. 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 I have to yeah. wonder about Butcher, whether she is playing a game or... I love it. Sort of, you know, follow me, follow your leader or what. Yeah, I love she it. and Ray, she and Ray completely every not season. Not that this guy needs to, not that these guys, yeah. rather, need to follow anybody. No. Because, I mean, um, Prada yes. Autumn, Winter, um, or was it Spring, Summer? Um, I wasn't expecting that, the last collection to be like just all like suits. And yes, the ambassadors. Yeah. I thought that was genius because the rubber soling that she did. And again, it was uh, because one of the things we, 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 we forget, there are people who are going to come in and buy an entire outfit, but there would be some people who would say, OK, I'll just go for the shoes, the on tie the shirt, in or and the shoot. So yeah. that within one look, yes. you had already, let's say, six clients. That's a good point. These clothes are very accommodating. Yes. You can work with other people's clothes. Yes. Designers don't always like that. That's point. true. I mean, obviously, the ideal is, and where autumn, winter is stronger than spring, summer, is that it's easier to build a look. And they know that with, in terms of the buyers look at pieces that they can build the whole look with the customer mm -hmm. and the customer will take the jacket, the knitwear, the, you know, everything. Yeah. So that's the ideal. Obviously, mm -hmm. designers don't want them to mix and match it. But um, I think with that, what? it's easy to do. There's pe you could do whole looks in before there. We, before we go on, what um, do you as a retailer feel about this idea, which I find very constraining when you walk through a shop and you see lots of little shops like boutiques, or Ralph Lauren yeah. sweater, and you feel, well, I can't take this Ralph Lauren sweater and see how it would look with this Calvin Klein coat or something. Why? Uh, presumably, it's the designers who insist that they have their own space. Yes. Yeah, some some do. Does it so work for you as a retailer? Um, well, we do. So people can take looks from, say, Prada, who's a concession, and then take it to somewhere else, you know, and take it to Calvin Klein and build a look like that. Um, but I think the brands feel they have more control if they're a concession over their imaging and yeah. their mm. staff and everything if they're controlling the whole thing. Some people prefer to be what we call own bought, which is within the um, you know, bought by the buyers for the department. Your decision. Yeah, yeah. They, they prefer it because they trust that retailer to represent yes. them well. It's, it, yes. it totally depends. Someone like Prada, obviously, where they want full control over everything, they would never be um, not represented by themselves. They, they yeah. want the full control of the concession. What do you feel as a designer? I think the bigger brands definitely need to have their own concessions and the smaller designers um, and the more riskier ones can all mix together. Well, no, see, I would have thought exactly the opposite. Yeah. I would have thought that if the a young designer needs to be able to be seen cohesive. full full pelt, as it mm. were. What do you think? 
I mean, I, I can understand why established design is doing it. It's, it's this idea of control. It's okay. this idea of yes. them yes, being to able to show the pieces, even if it's pieces necessarily that they don't think will sell, but they feel that it's important to have them there to represent themselves. Mm -hmm. It's that idea of brand and image control, which they do very well. I think it's interesting we're talking about Milan Fashion Week because the Italian brands do it incredibly well. Mm. It's always interesting to see. I, I always find it interesting to go to Milan menswear and Milan womenswear and be able to compare and contrast because yeah. Not that many people attend both. They have specific m menswear and They're women's quite self-contained. Exactly. Yes. Um, whereas you go to Prada, and for instance, they, we talked about Prada last autumn winter. Um, they had that carpet for men and for women. It's mm -hmm. actually the same carpet. Same scent. It, it was, was the, the same scent. It was the same carpet. They yes, dyed. They yes. dyed it for the women's because they couldn't yeah. get a carpet woven that big again in right. the timescales that they had. Um, but that idea of that the the shows correspond to each other which creatively is beautiful, but on a retail level, if they're sitting together in a boutique, the clothes have to correspond to one another, they have to make sense. Not necessarily mm -hmm. a male and female version, but they have to you know, have some yeah. sort of aesthetic discussion. Right. Can I ask you, I've never worked on a magazine. Apart from years ago, I was the fashion editor of Country Life. Now, if that isn't a contradiction in terms, <laughs> I mean, you know, when I went there, all they wanted was a big roulette of armor. Wow. But I did manage to get Ralph Lauren on the cover, and I did manage to get uh, Rick or Kubo in the wow. Quite an achievement. An awful lot of people cancelled their subscription <laughs> as a result of that. But when you're looking at the flat pad, plan mm. and you're seeing the advertisements coming in do you think oh my god I wish they hadn't chosen to photograph this particular thing because it fights with the story that I'm making inside or do you just think well that's that part of the book the front of the book nothing to do with us I'm no I mean I, w I was incredibly surprised when I started at how considered it is I mean certainly with us we work with our publisher and figure out it that's sort of when it becomes a real jigsaw puzzle is when you're fitting in the advertising and fitting in advertising that works with the editorial pages because sometimes you will have them we tend to place advertising opposite text because it, it works better that way but if it's opposite an image then it's working out images that will contrast so you won't think that the editorial is part of the advertising no. or vice versa right. it's actually working out a kind of an again it's a dialogue it, it's an aesthetic dialogue between advertising and editorial and making sure that it, it is all telling kind of a similar story um, and that it all works together and that was something that I didn't really think about until I started physically working with right. it and it's one of the things right. that has most su surprised me about the magazine how considered that element of mm. it is um, mm. and it is important because it's with a magazine um, like Love It it's, it's almost half of the content is the advertising Yes, um, and it's placing that is is as important. Yes, and, and I think sometimes the advertiser also wants to know where they're going to be placed oh, in the magazine. So. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Chanel used to have terrific battles with American Vogue <laughs> about where she was placed and where Patou, who was um, more or less mm -hmm. the same sort of, well, he was doing sportswear. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and she had monumental battles. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have you ever worked styling with um, with advertising? Yeah, 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 definitely I did. And uh, the thing about it is, because I was fashion editor and, and, and creative editor of of, of um, Second Generation and Pride magazine, and one of the things I constantly enjoy about any magazine today is being taken on a journey, and I want a magazine six months later to be taken up and to be held and to discover something totally new. I do not like a disposable thing. So that I always thought, okay, what are we going to be looking at this issue? Are we going to be focusing on music? Are we going to be thinking about the economy and have editorial that works with the fashion images mm -hmm. so that you have this cohesive journey as I say, that you're taken through. And with advertisers, they appreciated that very much so that there is some sort of consistency throughout it all. And of course, nothing works better than strong images. So for me, it would always be uh, 
having not just pretty pictures, right? I mean, and it's something that I know you constantly ask, but to be taken on a journey because that's the role of a stylist. That's why certain stylists are more successful than others because these garments that that creative, that, that Italo Zucchelli has done for Calvin Klein, I now as a stylist have got to translate that into another story because we have the opportunity, and I mean most people now have the opportunity to see all the collections. In the past it wasn't that way. So the role of the stylist when it comes to print and magazine is to take your reader onto another journey. Hence you have the collaborations like Simon Foxton and Nick Knight yeah. being absolutely splendid mm -hmm. because you have you were taken on a journey. Yes. You know, and that's the role of a stylist. So that the clothes as a stylist becomes <laughs> my paint and canvas. I now have to use that to tell a story. So for me, that's why I was thinking, yes, it's a genius collection. And of course, menswear, and you see coming to fall, they're the things that always have to be, you have three seasons for September, October, you have suits back to work. And it just goes down to the time to Christmas, we have tuxedos, formal wear, stuff like that so that that already breaks up the yeah. three categories for that season what the types of stories you want to do so as i said you've got the urban suits type thing and you however abstract or literal you can shoot the suits in wall street at a desk mm -hmm. i mean and those are yeah. cliches yeah. or as i say you can use that american gothic thing where you've got the man and the woman or all men in the suits out in the field holding out in somewhere rural pastoral yes, even yes. and it's that contrast yeah, that yeah. makes it exciting and dynamic jack uh, do the designers let you know in advance what they have chosen to photograph for their advertisements as a retailer or do you suddenly see them in a magazine and they go my god none of that is what we've chosen no yeah we say. actually do see in advance with some brands i know for a jill example we've seen the campaign already with what is right. going in the campaign so and obviously that, to, that works is that to, that they want some sort of a no they don't want any feedback because they've done it yeah it's not about feedback it's, it's just more about awareness yes. Yeah. yeah um yes. i just i want to pick up on something you were talking about earlier okay, as well about but with regards to people seeing the whole collections now and it not just being a limited audience. It, the, it's almost like the customer now is the buyer themselves. Yes. And so what we see yeah. is what you were talking about, people coming in and they'll say, oh, I actually want look five yes. from um, the Calvin collection. And they're like the buyer. And then what we do is we'll contact the supplier and get that whole look in for them and then they'll purchase it through us. So it's a, there's a different way within retail that I think people people with a lot of money shop like that, mm -hmm. and they'll say sometimes we don't even know the look they're talking about. They'll say look to on style.com, and they're more they're more aware of it, and they're not in they're not in the fashion industry. They'll be uh, yeah. like you said, a lawyer or yeah. something yeah. like that. Well, last week as a personal shop, I went into Prada with a client, and the sales girls they know us. Everybody came out, and there's already stuff for spring summer that's not on the shop floor at all and this is in the Prada shop mm -hmm. and because we were uh, gold card or whatever platinum card clients we had view of what's coming up so that he could start purchasing his summer mm -hmm. stuff and that's the way it goes and because everybody knows and as you said everybody is a gold card purchaser now and everybody has the capacity to be their own editor. You no longer have the role of a fashion editor or a stylist, because as you said, that individual in Azerbaijan, he's sitting there and he's already placed his order mm. from that Calvin Klein collection that he's just seen and purchased it already. So why do they need you? They need me to make it more romantic, to All make right. it, to to make it covetable. It. Fantasize. Um, covetable, that's yeah. covetable. Word. That's, that's the word I would always use. Yes. It's it has to remember that's what clothes do. You're touched by beauty. That's yes. what we do. We brush people with beauty with clothes. So that we then have to make it covetable. So he's seen the collection. He's now gonna wait and he doesn't want to wait mm. six to nine no, months. Yeah. Yes, yes, he doesn't no, want no, to wait no. six to nine months to see what the magazines are going to do. But then it comes along and it gives him that further nudge. Yes, I was correct because and then that's what some people do they choose the looks 
before they come out in the campaign and then it comes out in the campaign and they think damn i was right i think that's, that's i it. think that's why a few brands has started to let the customer order straight away is to see straight up yes i think yeah. burberry, burberry, did burberry that. does it's it yeah. i'm not yes. sure they're still doing that yeah they do yeah, they they are. yeah yeah it's a I whole think that was new a very clever well, it, it goes idea. into the whole bespoke idiom Right, so that I've got it before anybody else, and I mean, yes. because remember, that's what it is. And then I think the first person to do that was um, Natalie Massonet with um, yes, with Roland Murray. Yes, um, when yeah. he created the dresses, there were for different, different stores or, or something. Yeah, they did yes. it with Holston as well when um, Marco well, before Z before Mo Roland Murray when yeah. Marco Zanini was at Holston, um, they did it with him. So you saw it, and then you ordered it okay. straight from the catwalk. But it was only with three styles, I think, from that. Yeah, yeah well, it got to be through that through How does that affect you as a as a, as a, as a large? an expensive store, expensive and it costs you a lot of money to be bang in the middle of Oxford Street. Does that worry you that they are sort of cutting the ground from under your feet? They do e-commerce as no, well. Do you no, do we it? do e-commerce as well. So you can order something through you? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That for us is a, is a huge strength and I think that that's what oh, pe people, know. the show now is becoming a different medium for, for that in itself. And I, you know, I love the fact that you're talking about bespoke because that's exactly what Selfridges has recognised now that these people from the Middle East or Azerbaijan or whoever who are buying these clothes, they do want the show pieces, the one-offs, they want something made for them and we've recognised that trend and that's why we've gone in that direction. Mm. Um, you know, people, they want the special pieces and they are editing the shows themselves and looking at it and buying themselves mm. and we get the looks in that they say and then, and then yeah. sell it through us. I think um, that's also helpful when it comes to the campaigns as well because then they will know what looks are going to be the most popular and what looks they should shoot and it's going to probably help the buyer as well because they're going to yeah get that information, what's going to be popular. Exactly. And yeah. they yeah. can get that into the shop floor. So, so you've all got to jump yeah. ahead. Right? Exactly, yes. be one step ahead of the game or yes. two steps ahead of the yes. game. But yes. I think that is what brings us back to what the real difference is between, say, Milan and London with the shows, is that these brands that are showing Milan, they have that power because these people in the Middle East or whoever the customer is, is watching these brands because they have brand power. It doesn't happen so much with the London's. Like people mm. aren't looking at the London shows and pick, don't you find? Yeah. No, no. one's, no, th that kind of customer is not looking at those London shows and picking those looks and saying, I want look three. Well, from certain brands, I would say, I mean, because, uh, you know, I think from well, Matthew Williamson, Roland Murray, not in the realm of menswear. Menswear still has the notion of Savile Row. So do you would have those money gentlemen from all over the world thinking it's the pinnacle of refinement and taste to go to Savile Row? What I do think will happen, and, 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 and uh, it's that the money, the paper billionaires, the new money makers who keep happening daily, they will be going for the more uh, adventurous avant-garde designers because they are not bound by, con by constrictions of this is what I've got to wear in order to fit in. I need a billion dollars, so I will wear an entire Rick Owens outfit today to have lunch at, at Shoreditch House, then meet my lawyer later on at some bar. Well, I wonder if you're right, actually, simply because I would have thought that if you've made a lot of money, you would want to impress other people who've made a lot of money. Yes. And money... Individuality. And formal suits. I don't think money and individuality go to the city. They're all the same. But money isn't it's being made just in the city anymore. As I no, was saying, we've but I'm got saying that money and taste. conformity mm. go together. Mm. Do you think that, Anna? I think it depends on, I mean, there is the idea of conformity, but then the idea of conforming to, uh, you know, a, a Chinese billionaire's idea of conformity is very different to a Russian oligarch yes. idea. I mean, I went to the Tom Ford presentation yeah. in London the other day, um, and he showed three full-length fur coats for men because he has seven shops in Russia and they sell incredibly right. well that. <laughs> okay. Which, to me, I was thinking, mm, that's a lot of luck, you know? That's <laughs> a lot for of me, fur. that's a lot of luck. Um, for like a wild, a floor-length wild fox overcoat. But they can't, ask you what they can't keep them. Fox. Wild, wild fox. <laughs> um, but they, he's, he's like, we've increased the fur in this collection because it sounds so well. Yes. Um, so it's that's, I mean, you wouldn't imagine yeah. a banker in London wearing no. that, but you could oh, very easily imagine yeah. a Russian. So that was the point I was making, I think on the global. global. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got to finish there, but I, I can think of nothing better 
been finishing it on the idea of three full-length wild <laughs> box coats. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.